I'll catch the last tail end of this. All right, you, not you, Davis, but I'm looking at other people who might be doing this in the future. You just missed some lecture because I forgot to start the recording. So this is where we're at, Consumer Producer Surplus. And actually, we have everything here, right? This is Chapter 5 on welfare analysis. Got it. Sheets. Ah, oh, thank you. So we'll get that going around. Good deal. Okay, so um, remember when we talked about disequilibrium? We said, what happened if the price was 65 back in Chapter 3? So I'm kind of blending over concepts now. If the price was not 50 and it was 65, what happened in the market? What did we observe? It was one of those things with an S. And it had a shortage. Was it a shortage or what was the other thing? Surplus. surplus. So it was one or the other, shortage or surplus. And notice that's different than this surplus. So at a price of 65, is there a shortage or a surplus? Shortage, shortage <laughs> surplus. surplus. Let's tell the story here. At 65, how many units do consumers want to buy? 50. How many are being supplied? Something greater than 100, actually. Right? So at a price of 65, there would be some sort of surplus here. In fact, let me just uh, make up a number since we're at it. Let's just say this is 140. So there would be a surplus of, what do we got here now, 90 boxes of golf balls. Now, the chapter three story we said is that that's not sustainable. If the golf store has a surplus of golf balls at a price of 65, what do they do? They lower the price. They run a sale, right? They've got excess inventory, big closeout, end of the, end of the summer savings or whatever. And so they drop the price down, and that disappears. What's happening with consumer and producer surplus if we're out of whack? If we're out of whack, what happened to consumer surplus? If we were out of whack, I'm kind of doing a little hypothetical here. If it got smaller, that's right. So if we were out of whack, how many golf balls are actually being purchased? 50. So at a price of 65, there's 50 being purchased. And so what is the consumer surplus area with that information? The difference between what we're willing to pay. Now we got Tony at 80 bucks. He's still in the market, but how much is his surplus? How much is his surplus if this is Tony here at 80? What's his surplus equal to? If we're out of whack, golf balls are priced at 65. Tony's still in the market here, number one. He was willing to pay 80. What's his consumer surplus? 15, right. So willing to pay actual. Willing, actual. This is, I kind of, you guys should visually, or if you got your papers, all of a sudden that triangle starts to reveal itself, right? There's the new consumer surplus. If we were out of whack, that would be the consumer surplus. Now, what about the producer's surplus? That's kind of interesting. If we were out of whack, what is the producer's <coughs> surplus? So we've got them providing 140 golf balls. Let's start small. Difference between, let's go to the first box sold. Difference between what we're actually getting and the minimum amount we must get. Actual 65. Minimum down here, right? Actual minimum, actual minimum, actual minimum, actual minimum, actual minimum, 
actual minimum, actual minimum, actual minimum, actual minimum? <laughs> yeah? What, now I want you to really hang on the words of this. The units sold. Did we sell those? No, we produced them, but we didn't sell them. So hang on this word right here, the number of units sold. So at that price, the new producer surplus is this little wonky looking trapezoid. Which we could find the area of, right? There's a right triangle, or there's a rectangle, there's a right triangle. We could add those two together. I'm not going to go through that, but now society's welfare is this weird trapezoid here. It looks like one of those razor blades that you put in the cutting knife, right? What happened to society's welfare overall? Did it go up or down? Down. We lost. We lost this amount, right? When the market was out of whack, we lost this area. That area is called dead weight loss. Dead weight loss. All right, so got some new things to look at here. Let me sum up a couple of these concepts here. So, society's welfare or well being is equal to consumer surplus plus producer surplus. With the free market, I'll just draw a little graph here. You guys can draw it if you want. But the supply demand with the free market, it was consumer surplus plus producer surplus gave us that whole triangle region, just like what we did here. If we are not in equilibrium, if we are not in equilibrium, there is a dead weight, a dead weight loss, <coughs> DWL, a dead weight loss to society. So, for example, at a price of sixty five was the example we did here. So if the price equaled $65, then we had a surplus of 90 units. If price equals $60, there is a surplus of 90 units. Maybe I'll switch over here so you guys don't have to jump the screen. There's a surplus of 90 units. Because consumers are only buying 50. Consumers are buying 50, and the quantity supplied is 140. All 
I'm just going to give this to you graphically here. The new producer and consumer surplus is, and I'm going to draw a new type of picture. This will be some good practice. So you guys need to redraw this one. Draw a home base. If you want, we can do the same numbers, but we're going to draw our 65 in. So I'm just redrawing the same picture, but I'm going to leave the shade. I'm going to do the shading a little bit differently this time. Okay. So everybody get caught up to that spot. We'll rush ahead of Davis, you got this drawn? I just walked around the room making sure everybody's caught up. Let me see your paper. If you're just opening up your notebook, I'm guessing you don't have the latest stuff drawn. Yeah. So, part of being where you're at is the same as being in class. So you got to stay, stay up on it. Uh, you can see it. I can see what you can see. So you can follow along. At least have something started. All right. So we're going to do it a little bit differently. I want to put some fun letters here. How about A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, G, H, I, J. <coughs> so get all these drawn in. So what is the new producer surplus, or the new consumer surplus? A. a, right? So same thing we did over here. It equals area A. The new producer surplus is B and E. So B plus E is the area we identified there. We're a little out of whack, but we got B plus E. And so ABE represents society's welfare. <coughs> so the new social welfare equals A plus B plus E, the value to society. With a free market equilibrium, the free market equilibrium gives us what for consumer surplus? A, B, and C. And what for producer surplus? E and F. So we got A plus B plus C and plus E plus F. And so the difference between these two, the areas that we lost, C and F. 
So that shows the impact, right? That's our dead weight loss is area C and F. When I compare out of whack versus equilibrium. So the dead weight loss, the dead weight loss for disequilibrium equals area C and F. Yes. Um, yeah, good question. It, it's just from circumstances. So um, it's kind of that hypothetical if the market wasn't clearing. Now, one situation that we saw, or the kind of the story we can tell, is that um, if the um, demand curve shifted. What would happen if we stayed at the old price, right? So, like, there might be a process to get through, and so we're not there yet. And we can say, well, this is the negative effect of there being a slow moving price adjustment. There'd be some waste to society in a sense. That's what the dead weight loss is. What's the technical term for out of whack? Out of whack disequilibrium, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I wrote here, disequilibrium. Dead weight loss for disequilibrium. Things are a little screwy out of whack. All right, other questions there? So what happens to consumer surplus if demand becomes more inelastic or less elastic? If demand becomes less elastic, what happens to the demand curve? Does it get steeper or flatter? Steeper, it starts to look like an eye, right? What happens to the consumer surplus area as we do that? It gets bigger, right? The green area, you can imagine if I rotated it through here, the green area would start to get bigger. Is it at the expense of the orange area? No, so the orange area would stay the same, so social welfare would actually go up if we had that type of adjustment. Likewise, if demand was really elastic, the green area starts to shrink, the orange area stays the same. Same thing here with the supply curve. If the supply curve becomes less elastic, does it get steeper or flatter? Steeper. Less elastic means it's more inelastic. As it starts to get steeper, what happens to the orange area? It's getting bigger, right? So producer surplus. So the producer surplus and the consumer surplus are going to be dependent upon the elasticities of supply and demand. That's going to end up uh, potentially changing our, our information. Okay, questions on that? I'll write that up on the board too. So how do the elasticity of demand and the elasticity of supply uh, affect the consumer and producer surplus, question mark. So if a more inelastic demand will increase consumer surplus. A more inelastic supply will 
increase producer surplus. Now, what if we were out of whack, otherwise known as what, Tony? <coughs> Disequilibrium, right. So for, what if we were out of whack and there was a less elastic demand curve? What happens to the dead weight loss? Does it get bigger? So let's see, we got the same price here. What's happening to the consumer surplus? It's getting bigger. What's happening to the 50? If we're out of whack and we're at 65, it's increasing. Yeah, so I don't think I've ever done this maneuver. Might get dangerous. I might poke an eye out or something here. But as I start to make this go like this, this is actually moving this direction, right? So what's happening to that little triangle area? It's actually shrinking. And in fact, if demand was perfectly inelastic, What's true about the dead weight loss? It's actually gone. Yeah, it would disappear. So that's a little bit with the with the if it was out of whack on how dead weight loss might be uh, impacted. So let me put that as a as a note. So dead weight loss in general. Dead weight loss decreases if demand or supply is more inelastic. Dead weight loss, sorry, dead weight loss decreases if demand or supply is more inelastic and ultimately might disappear. All right. So let's um, let's do a little summary here. Any any last questions on consumer producer surplus? I want to tie the material together. Then we're going to call it a Friday. Because you guys got your work cut out for you. So we had chapter three. With chapter three, we learned about home base. Which gave us the two laws. I'm just going to kind of write in brief the law of supply and the law of demand and the law of the land. Increase price, producers want to bring more to the market. If we increase price on consumers, they buy less. So we had the two laws of demand and supply. And then we had all of the shifters. So we had, I gave you five supply shifters for supply and demand. And we had five shifters for demand. I recommend that you memorize this. The shifter list. 
and that'll answer a lot of problems on a test. And it's going to help down the road more importantly. So there's chapter three in a nutshell. The shifters ended up being intimately related to chapter four's elasticities. So chapter four, we got the elasticity of demand. We had the elasticity with the cross price of related goods. We had the income elasticity. We had the supply elasticity. Kind of nice to have all those in one spot so that you see the similarities, right? We didn't, we're not, we're not, there's a lot of material in there and there's a lot of calculations, but once you really understand the first one, you'll have the rest of them. For tying it back to this chapter, it was the steepness of each curve. So we had a steep demand curve or we had a flat demand curve. You know, we had A and B. Steeper meant more inelastic for both, whether it was the supply curve or the demand curve. Graphically, with straight line demand curves, we're kind of talking, are they flat or are they steep? The law of demand tells us downward sloping demand, yes. Law of supply tells us upward sloping supply curve. And then the flatness or steepness, how steep or how flat, is what's covered in elasticity. And then with chapter five, we're looking at maybe something like that, where the flatness or steepness might be determined by the elasticity, and we can think about the welfare to society with consumer surplus and producer surplus, and we can start to pick apart different situations using our toolbox that we have formed with the previous two chapters. Have a good weekend. I will have, uh, we missed the front end of this lecture, but these will be posted on Russ Econ Rocks if you.